but fundamentally, as you all have discerned at this point in this process, that we believe anti-racist compassion and action to be something that's a consistent critical reflection on structural racism, right? On ourselves and how we operate within a structurally racist system. And so in this sense, it really is about eliminating and attending to racial exceptionalism um, so that we can actually um, unlearn these racist ideologies that are internalized within us so that we can actually change policies and outcomes and, and really attend to structural racism in, our, our, in the everydayness of our lives. Um, ultimately, we believe that without attending to the ways racism frames our understandings of ourselves and our world, that we cannot become anti-racist because we lack the ability to see ourselves for who we are and we see others through the filtered lens of the white savior. So this compassionate action circle um, has the steps grounding, self-compassion, compassion for others, anti-racist compassion action, and reassessing. So grounding, um, anti-racist actions requires to be standing on solid ground in a non-reactive state. To do otherwise would be to react rather than respond to a given situation. Anti-racist actions ask us to know the realities of race and racism and how they shape the everyday experiences of all people and particularly how they harm BIPOC folks. Once we are grounded in the realities of race, we can then move towards self-compassion, understanding that um, being anti-racist and anti-racist actions, they require deep awareness of how we live and move and have our being within a racist society. In this sense, we have to guard against racial exceptionalism regardless of our racialization because we know racism lives within all of us because racism is normal. And so in this sense, we must reflect on our own racist, racialized assumptions before we can engage in true compassion for another or an anti-racist compassionate act. True compassion, we're seeking compassion for another, seeks both to celebrate and celebrate the joy and ease the suffering of another. This can only be done if we see others for who they are and not through the racialized stereotypical image of them that we have been told to believe. So we have to see them in the totality of their experience, the complexities, their loves, their sufferings, their joys, all of them. This allows us to be open to an engagement uh, with them once we actually pulse for them and see them for the totality of who they are, understanding their experience and how they've been shaped, what normalizes them. This puts us in position to be open for an anti-racist compassionate action. As was outlined um, in the Compass article, this, uh, there is a level of individual actions that operate within those eight Compass points. Um, and we think those really help us orient ourselves in terms of how we want to go about in these actions. Um, get us in the right frame of mind when we are discerning what actions we might take on an individual level, but also they are helpful for when we think about how we are going to engage in these structural actions as well. Now, on a structural level, compassionate actions will be embodied in at least one of these seven pillars, right? So generosity. So for those of you who are in religious organizations, if you're in a church or something like that, you're talking about not, honestly, you're talking about giving to particular causes, right? Um, you're talking about how you uh, are taking the funds you are raising and how you are serving causes that help marginalized BIPOC communities. Um, service, right? Now this sometimes can seem to be easy, right? Because you talk about just acts of service. I think many of us do these kinds of actions, but it's making sure that in the process of doing this kind of service that there is learning that takes place, right? That it's not just going and dropping off and saying, okay, maybe these lunches, but actually understanding why the particular situation um, happened in the first place and how your particular act is designed to begin to remedy this. Witness, for those of you who are leaders or teachers or preachers, this is very much rooted in what you actually say how you craft your sermons, how you craft your writing, how you engage in these conversations. Are you speaking truth to power, right? To the ways in which structural racism is at play and actually impacting the, your life, the life of your community, the life of the church or the life of the people you engage with. Solidarity. How are you standing in solidarity with those who are marginalized and oppressed, right? Because that, that could be ways in which you're working with other organizations that aren't, that are uh, BIPOC led organizations, right? supporting them in the ways in which they are trying to engage in attending to structural racism. Empowerment. 
This one, I think, goes quite, quite honestly, I think goes right along the lines of service, right? Because so often service can get wrapped into this kind of tacit ways in which we um, cannot really, that we can make a, this, this kind of, um, what's what I'm looking for? Basically, we can set things up when we're trying to serve them. We're not really creating the capacities for them to flourish on their own. We're making this kind of tacit dependence. So in many ways, service, I think, needs to also complement in the ways in which we're thinking about empowerment, right? All the time. How are we empowering communities and organizations and institutions, right? To uh, that are either BIPOC led or BIPOC mar uh, uh, run um, or serving BIPOC communities so that they can use the gifts, tools, and skills they have to do the work that they know they're called to do, that they need, that they can do with, the re with some additional help. Accountability. How are you going to create accountability metrics within your institution, right? How, what visions are you going to cast? What mission statement are you going to write? What are you going to do? And then how are you going to hold yourself accountable to doing this over the long haul? And then a focus on justice, recognizing that at its core, we are called to embody these actions and that they should transform not only ourselves, but they should transform our institutions and how we go about engaging in the world. After that, right, we go to reassessment. We recognize the anti-racist actions that uh, they can become a new beginning where further reflection is needed, right? So basically solving one problem, as we said, can lead a, to another problem that we hadn't considered. Um, and so in this sense, after you get done with an action, it's important to reassess and essentially start the circle all over. These are some diagnostic questions we have found to be helpful in our reassessment uh, process. The implementation of the action, bring about the desired result, if not, what should have been done to rep replace the previous action and make it more effective? How could the affected communities, how do they feel about the actions that were taken? What, if any, of the unintended consequences were uh, from their vantage point? 